Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to go through the various different ways that you can connect up your equipment to your TV. Now you might want to do this to be showing off your photos or more than likely is to watch things like BBC iPlayer, Netflix, Now TV, that kind of thing. Now a lot of TVs these days are smart but if your TV is a cheaper version or an older version then it's not going to be smart so you're going to have to connect a piece of equipment to it to make it into a smart TV so you can watch your BBC iPlayer and Netflix etc. So in this video I'm going to go through some of the ways going from more older equipment up to more up-to-date equipment and also on a, a variety of TVs as well so hopefully there will be some setup in this video that will mimic the setup that you have in your house and you'll be able to copy it. Now it will be quite a long video but hopefully hopefully you will find it helpful. So what you have to do is first of all you need to look at the back of your TV to see what kind of connections you have. Now most TVs within the the last six, seven, eight years will have these HDMI ports ports and also a lot of TVs, even the older ones will have a VGA port and then you will also have your audios, audio in as well. Now, if you're using HDMI, then that will carry picture and sound, but if you're using, using the VGA, that will only carry the picture, so you will have to use the audio in, left and right. Now, on this TV, these are RCA, also known as Phono connections, but I have got a TV in the kitchen that uses a 3.5 millimeter jack, so I'll show you that one as well, and hopefully between the two, that will mimic what you have. Now, if you can use HDMI, then do that one. It's by far the better picture. But if, you, if uh, for example, your laptop hasn't got HDMI, then you will have to use a VGA. So let's go through the equipment here and see what we've got. So we've got a laptop here. It's quite, uh, quite a few years old now. And this one, if you have a look down the side, it hasn't got any HDMIs on it. So have a good look around your one, see what you have. So on this one I've got no choice, I have to use a VGA, which is this port here. Now with the VGA leads, you can either get VGA or SVGA. Go for the SVGA and also, if possible, get one with a 3.5mm plug built into the lead. So for example, this is a lead that you'll be looking at. It's a 15 pin connector and it also has, if you have a look, it also has this 3.5 audio lead built into it. So there's one on that side and then you've got that one on the other side. If you've already got a, a VGA or a SVA, VGA lead, it's not a problem because you can just run one of these separately. But if you're buying a new one, you might as well get one of these with the lead built in because it's, all in, it's, a, it's an all-in-one lead so you don't have to buy two separate leads. So just to show you working on this one to begin with. You plug in your VGA into the computer here. You then plug in the 3.5 into the headphone jack. So not the microphone jack, but the headphone jack. You can see there because it looks like a headphone. The headphone jack. And then the other end of the lead. You plug into the VGA on your TV. Now, as you can see, I haven't got a port on my TV for a 3.5mm jack. So what I'm going to have to do is, I'm going to have to use one of these, which is a 3.5mm jack to twin phono, or to 2RCA. It's that shape there. And to join this 3.5mm jack to the other 3.5mm jack I'm going to have to use a, a coupler or a 3.5mm joiner. Okay, so you put that one on there and what that does, it turns a male into a female. So plug that one in this side, like so. And then these leads are marked up as red and black, so put red to red, and we haven't got a black here, but we got the white, so put the black to the white. Obviously, if your leads are red and white, we'll plug red to red and white to white. 
So now we will have the computer connected up to the uh, TV via the VGA lead and also we, which will carry the picture and also the sound will come through the phono plugs. So what we will have now is whatever we have on the laptop will be on the TV. So if we go to source on the TV and you need to go down to VGA stroke PC. Okay, now, so we now have the laptop working on the PC. Now, you, you, there's different options. You can either duplicate your screen, you can extend the screen, or you can have it working only on the second TV. Now, often if the kids want to watch a movie, then what I will do is I will have the, the laptop blank down here and I'll have it just working on the second screen. But if you were maybe doing work and you had a smaller TV next to, uh, next to your screen, then you would probably want to extend it so you've got more workspace to work on. So all you have to do is, on this particular laptop, you go to FN, and then if you have a look at this F5, it might be different on your one there, but it's like a computer screen with a screen next to it. So go to FN and F5, and if you have a look at the side now, it will say second screen only, extend, duplicate, or PC screen only. So I'm just gonna duplicate it to begin with so you get an idea, and then I'll go through the different options. So if you can have a look now, we've got it on the laptop and also on the TV. But a really handy one is to go to Extend, which is this one here. And what that will do is, you'll have it working on the laptop here, so you can have certain programs open here. But then, when you move your mouse across to that side there, it then appears on the TV up here. So you can extend your screen onto this one here, and you can have various different pages open. So if I was to go to back over here, open up a new page, and then I can drag that page by clicking and holding it. I can drag that page, see me dragging it, over this way, which then will come up onto the new screen here and then you've got your another page open there. So you can have the page open there and the page open there. So that's really handy, but if you're just using it, for example, to watch Netflix or BBC iPlayer, then I think the best one, because it's, it can be off-putting, especially if you've got the lights off in the room, it can be off-putting to have the picture on here and up here. So if I just go again to FN and that one there, and then go down to second screen only, and it will come up here. Okay, so that's one way off doing it from a, an old laptop onto the TV. Obviously, if you had a newer laptop, you would just be running uh, a HDMI cable, which is this type of cable here. It's a much newer cable. It's far superior to the VGA leads, and it also carries sound as well, so you haven't got to run a separate cable. Right, so that's the, the laptop version. I'm now going to show you some other versions. Right, let's say now you want to connect your tablet to the TV screen. So if we have a look here, up on the top, you will see that there's a little connection there, and that is actually a micro HDMI output. So what you can do is you can connect up your tablet to the TV using a micro HDMI to HDMI, yeah? Which is one of these. So that's your normal HDMI to a micro HDMI. So we plug in the micro one up top, like so. And then we'll plug the other, the other end into one of the ports on the back. Let's plug it into HDMI one, like so. And then again, if we go to source, and go to HDMI one, you should get your tablet working on the screen. There you go. And then you can pick whatever you want. So if you want to pick your YouTube, you can do. 
and that's another way of watching making your TV into a, a smart TV. If you have an old iPod lying around, it's an old iPod touch, then you will be able to connect this up to your TV to make your TV into a smart TV. Or if you've got a new iPod touch, you'll be able to do the same as well, or your iPhone. Now, it is limited, you can't watch as much as the Android devices, but you will be able to do Netflix and stuff like that. But it doesn't actually mirror the screen, but when you go to play Netflix, it will stop playing on here, but it will be playing on the TV itself. So you need to get like an Apple adapter like this one here. This is a VGA one, you will be able to get HDMI ones as well. So what you do is you plug in your Apple adapter into the bottom of your device. Then you need to plug in your VGA lead into the adapter. Your headphone jack into the actual iPod. And then, for example, if we go to VGA down the bottom again, it's OK. It won't mirror it, but if you were to go to... So it will just come up with a blank screen, so you'll think it's not working. But then when you go to something like Netflix... Give it a minute. OK, now if I was to play this video here... And there you go, it will be coming up on the TV. Okay, but yeah, it's not, it's not on the screen there. So it's not as good, but it still works. If you're using your newer iPod Touch, then you'll have to get an adapter with a lightning connector. Because this one here is the old fashioned adapter. But you can get these adapters, lightning adapter to VGA and lightning adapter to HDMI. Another good one for turning your TV into a smart TV is a games console like this Xbox One or for example a PlayStation 4 and your children will thank you for it as well. So there it is down there. Not only do you play games but it's got a huge amount of apps on it as well so these are just some of the popular ones. Netflix, YouTube, go down you've got BBC iPlayer, Now TV, Amazon, Channel 4, Demand 5, Vivo. So there's lots of apps to choose from. Okay, It works well, it's nice and quick good picture quality and there's no major whirring coming from it so you can easily watch a film or watch one of your documentaries via a games console and it, that plugs in via HDMI on that one right another really good gadget is this Roku media player this one's quite a few years old now I think it was about 80 pound then I believe they're a lot cheaper now and they've got more features on than this one but with this one it's got a HDMI output so it it's full H uh, full HD 1080p so it's a really nice picture it's got a, a wired connection for your Ethernet but you can also use wireless that's that's up to you I prefer a wired connection because I've got the house networked but rather than running cables you can if you're near to the router you can just rely on the wireless and uh, this has got loads of features built into it, so you can download all your BBC iPlayer, ITV, your Netflix, your Now TV. So this is a, a really good box here. So we're going to be using the HDMI coming out of the back of it. Plugging it into the HDMI one port there. Doesn't matter which port you use, one or two. And now, if you have a look up here, we've got a whole array of apps and everything and there's there's loads more that you can search from you can even use your mobile phone to download the uh, the Roku remote control and it uses Wi-Fi so it works perfectly because the remote control you get with this uses Bluetooth and it can be a bit hit and miss so just download the app onto your mobile then it will work well and then you can go to your Netflix and the pictures fantastic so by getting one of these little Roku players I think that on an old TV is better than the new smart TVs because they just seem to have more apps on them. But the new new TVs now do have an awful lot of apps that you can download as well, so it is it is really good. So you've got that there, and then you've got all your other apps as well, like BBC iPlayer, and Now TV, and everything like that. Yeah, YouTube and all the rest of it. So that's a quite a cheap way of making your TV into a smart TV as well.
if you haven't got a, a, a laptop that you want to use. Okay, so now this is the kitchen TV, it's a lot smaller, but again, you still have, it's only a very cheap TV, but you still have all the connections at the back here. So we've got HDMI at the bottom here, another one round here, VGA at the top, and if you have a look there, that one there says PC Audio. So that will be the 3.5mm jack that I mentioned earlier. So in the earlier one I had to change that into two phonos, but in this one we'll be able to plug it straight in. So again we've got the VGA and the 3.5mm lead plugged into the headphone jack. So on the other side now we're going to plug in the VGA up top. Like so, and we're going to plug 3.5 straight into the PC audio. And now, if we go to on this TV, it says input, so you go to input to scroll through, and you'll need to go to on this one, you'll need to go to PC where it says PC. So, scroll through till you get to PC. Press OK. And now that should be mirroring what we see down here. OK, there you go. So that will mirror there. And the audio will come through, this time straight in without that little 3.5 to twin phono. Okay, so that's that one there. Now I'm going to show you what you can do if you've got a newer TV because there's ways you can do this wirelessly on the newer TVs. Right, if you've got a newer TV, you probably won't really be connecting up much things to it because if it's a smart TV, you'll be able to download the apps. But you might want to share some photos or there might be an app on your phone or your tablet that you can't get on your smart TV. So go to Source and look for Screen Mirroring. Press enter, and then you can follow the instructions there. But basically what you have to do is you have to get your mobile phone, this is on an Android, scroll down, and there should be a button that says cast screen, or if you go into settings, you will be able to find it. I've already done a, a video on this one, so you can watch that one separately. Go to cast screen, and then it will come up with your make and model of TV. Make sure you pick your one and not one that's in a, a different part of the property or one of your neighbors. So click on that and then it will say connecting. Okay, and then if you have a look there, it will mirror, it will mirror your TV. So if I go to home, and if you put it on the side, if I go to, for example, YouTube, There you go, and put it on its side there, and you'll have full screen and you can do what you want or share the pictures. Okay, so that's how you can mirror your mobile phone to your TV. Now there's also a way you can mirror your, your Windows 10 PC or laptop to the TV wirelessly as well using Miracast. So I'm just gonna show you that one now. Right, on your Windows 10 PC, go down to this little icon down here. Click on it and then go to project. And if it says connect to a wireless display, and if your TV supports Miracast as well, then you will be able to actually connect to your TV without using any cables. So if I click connect this one here, connect to a wireless display, and basically it's uh, searching for items, and there you go, it's got my TV there. So click on this, and it says connecting. And hopefully now on the TV it should say connecting. There we go. And again, you can do the different ones where you can project it, you can extend it. So if you go to here to change projection mode, then you can, for example, go to either duplicate, which it is at the moment, focusing, or you can go down to extend, second screen only. So if you want to extend it, then basically it will bring up a whole new one there that you can open up new pages 
and then that's like a in a way like having a separate computer okay if you go to duplicate you can put your TV uh, you can put your photos on here or watch Netflix on here and it will come up up there okay I hope you found it useful there's uh, it's quite a long bit video I apologize for that but there's quite a few different scenarios there and hopefully one of them will be able to fit your needs okay if you liked it give it a thumbs up please subscribe for more how-to videos thanks very much take care bye now